Ladies and gentlemen, welcome on back to the treehouse. Uh, a somber note today because we are going to be catching, cleaning, and cooking uh, a backyard chicken. Now this is not something I particularly want to do. Uh, I had I'd gotten some uh, unsexed chickens and ended up with uh, uh, some great hens that I really like. And then I ended up with uh, three roosters. At first, it was it was really cool. Everyone was getting along pretty well, and as they've gotten a little older, roosters are about a year old now. Uh, they're really starting to fight a lot. So uh, uh, these are named, unfortunately, Mr. Penny and Colonel Sanders. Uh, they're the two big roosters, and they're fighting now. For a while, Mr. Penny, Mr. Penny would just beat up Colonel Sanders all the time. Beat him up every day, and Colonel Sanders would just take it, take it, take it. And one day, one day recently, about a couple weeks ago, he woke up and said, I am not taking this, this crap from Mr. Penny anymore, and he started thrashing him. Colonel Sanders, he's got an eye injury, he's, his eyes all jacked up, I'm afraid they're going to peck each other's eyes out and scratch each other to the point where one of them is going to expire or lose uh, an eye or a comb or a waddle or something something bad. I've got I actually got two roosters that we're going to cook up today. I've got a frizzle, uh, which is a useless little rooster, I thought it was going to be a, a, a hen, uh, and then we've got Mr. Penny. So Colonel Sanders will be the lead rooster here at the uh, Rackley Roost, and he will be uh, the guardian from all these backyard predators, all that kind of stuff. Uh, he is the bigger rooster. He is the dominant rooster right now. Uh, the hens love him. You know, the hens just love him. We like him too. It's going to be for the better. Got some useless eaters, essentially. So this is Mr. Penny. This is the guy that we're going to be uh, consuming today he doesn't even know it look how crazy that is this is the other guy that we're going to be cooking up because he's just useless I, look at him walking sideways i think there's something wrong with him that chicken right there is the only chicken in this roost this coop that i've never touched he seems like he'd be easy to pick up but when you get close to him he turns in turbo mode all right i know you already think you're the man but you're gonna be the guy Colonel Sanders is actually, he's pretty, he's a pretty sweet rooster. He has, uh, he has kicked me a few times when he was, uh, uh, not getting the food. He was like last on the ladder to get food when Mr. Penny was kicking him around. That's no longer the case. We are trying to make some more chickens. I have a broody hen, which happens to be a frizzle. Let's check it out in here. See what we got cracking. Hopefully no eggs cracking. There she is. Got one of the prairie bluebell eggers. She's popping one out right now. But this frizzle right here, she is sitting on a clutch of eggs. She's got a dozen eggs and she has been uh, broody for about a month. But about a week ago, I just gave her some eggs. I was like, okay, get this, get this out of your system. We're about to take out some chickens, so maybe we'll we'll get a few more. And you know what? It, it, this is so weird to me for some reason. It's like I've, I've cleaned a bunch of animals. I've, you know, I've hunted a lot and brought animals home, but, it, but know, a chicken is just kind of weird. It's like you eat chicken all the time. And so many places you're just eating chicken, 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 chicken from the grocery store. But a backyard chicken, catching it, Cleaning it, cooking it, that is, that is foreign to me, folks. So we are going to learn about it today, and uh, we are going to be putting Mr. Penny on the pellet grill over here. Uh, you may be asking yourself, well, how are you going to do it, man? How are you going, how are you going to take him out? Guillotine what? Well, we got a stump right here. Got a good old-fashioned stump. We'll get ourselves a little chop-chop blade, and uh, well, bam. Uh, that's how we're going to do it right there. I don't know how many chickens we'll get out of our next uh, clutch that we have. I want a couple of more hens uh, because right now I pretty much consume almost all the eggs every day. I usually get three or four and I eat like three eggs every morning when I'm home. A lot of times I take them with me uh, when I'm out fishing, camping. I like eggs for breakfast every morning. So having a couple more hens would be great, but if we get a couple more roosters out of it, 
let them grow up to about a year like they are now and bless them, guess what? Chicken dinner. It's like they know. They know something's up. He's like, why do they, why do you have a pot, dude? Why are you heating that pot up? Why am I heating that pot up? Well, so I don't, I did not know how to uh, properly pluck a chicken until last night when I looked it up. My mom had told me, Justin, I think you're going to have to have to put that chicken in some hot water to get all the feathers out. I was like, Mom, that, no. I don't. You got to put it in water. Uh, I've heard about 150 is optimal. And then uh, you put it in there for just a little bit to soak the feathers, kind of get the... Um, the skin soft or the feathers will pluck out very easily pull it out pluck them all out and then we're going to be cooking the chicken right here so I've got a bucket to sort of drain drain the blood drain the juices uh, then we'll get the pluck the pluck on uh, once we get it um, all the innards removed I'm gonna take it upstairs OSG is gonna get me a spice combo and then we will put it right here. Look at these spurs, man. These spurs are crazy. Could really do some damage with me right now, so. Not expecting that. Uh, you know that you know that old expression? Yeah, you know you know the one I'm talking about. Like a chicken with its head cut off. Well, that, that's real. Holy cow! So I've seen like the industrial cones that you get that you put the the chicken inside of that, and their head is like sticking out, and you can kind of drain the juices and all that stuff. I can see that being so much better than what I just did, but um, you know, just backyard. I'm using just a piece of scrap leather. Grab them by the dome, and uh, you know, that way his eyes are covered up and everything, and then I kind of protect my hand. This other chicken, this frizzle chicken, I do not like him at all. He's bitten me and scratched me and all that stuff, so uh, this is not gonna be a problem emotionally. Mr. Penny, yeah, uh, we get we get little. Uh, this other one doesn't even have a name, which is great. There's no, there's no bond there. <laughs> wow, pitiful little crow. Okay, Let's see if I can get this guy. It's like he knows. Now he knows. Yeah, you fast. <laughs> he just looks so dopey and. Weird. You walk sideways and then you try to grab him and he turns into Usain Bolt. It's crazy. Velocitalons right there. Little spurs, little little buddy spurs right there. Alright, we're just waiting for the water to get down to 150. It's like I heated it up a little too much. It's at 160 right now. And let's take our little boy. Little guy here who I think, you know, since he's a frizzle to begin with, these feathers are gonna be really easy to, to take off. They're not even really feathers, they're just kind of quills. We'll dunk him in here. This be a good trial run. It's my first time dunking a chicken. Didn't even have to push him down there. He just sank right to the bottom. Wow. I don't know how to do this, but I'm just gonna let it soak for a little bit. One minute. Yep, coming out pretty smooth, all right. So this is going to be like a little Cornish hen. Cornish hen size. That's fun. Alright, we'll get this guy totally plucked and then we'll move on to chicken two. As far as I know, this is this is the first uh, frizzle chicken catch and cook on the books, on the internet. So, uh, flair, beat you to it. So this, this just kind of sucks. This is not the best. Hoping the other one's gonna be easier. Hopefully, Mr. Penny's gonna be a little easier. <laughs> Son of 
submerging my bird. This is going to be satisfying. If he tastes good. We're gonna cook this thing without refrigeration, nothing. I mean, we're just gonna put some seasoning on it, some olive oil, and slap it on this uh, woodwind right here, and just go for it. So, this is about as fresh as it can get. What's crazy too is their, uh, their little skin on their feet starts to peel off. You know, you know how your skin gets pruny if you ever take a bath? It's like that, and then it just peels right off, and then they have you know, white feet underneath. Really puts into perspective those uh, trips to Chick-fil-A. This is how you gotta do it back in the day, right here. Just gonna try to do this as fast as possible before it just really cools down. Right now he kinda looks like one of those chihuahuas with no hair. Yeah, there was definitely some plumage that was tough to get, but we're just gonna go with what we got right now. Might be a couple of stragglers on there. What am I standing in, you may ask? This is a garden bed that I built for Stephanie for Mother's Day. Uh, she really wanted one, so I built one for her. This is gonna be my cleaning station for right now. Uh, never cleaned a chicken. Do I start at the vent or do I start at the neck? That is a great question. All right, I can see all the innards. Just gonna try to get these out, one fail swoop. I mean, when I woke up this morning, I was like, man, you know what, today's the day. I'm gonna have to get after the, those roosters. I was envisioning it being kind of tough, and this is, uh, this is that part right now. There's some gizzards we go catfishing with. That gun. Toughies. Some toughies right there. All right, let's see about these feet. And I cut them at that joint. I think they should probably split at. Chicken foot. Go. Yay! Took a great time to come out here with the kids, honey. I know. Well, you know, we saw you from way up at the, you know, Emmy's bedroom way up there. So we saw him cutting. Mr. Penny up from way up there, you know, Emmy's bedroom. And she's like, hey, it's Mr. Penny. So thankfully she wasn't freaked out. Otherwise we would not be down here. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, this is this is difficult. The anatomy of a chicken is hard. I was having, I was like, I don't get it. I was trying to get in there and like scoop from both ways. It's very difficult to get the little heart and the lungs and everything oh, yeah. out of there. It's, you know, there's not much space. Cause you know, in the grocery store, it just all comes package you just reach your hand in there scoop it all out and throw yeah. it away this is not how it happens you kind of figure it out yeah we're gonna eat him we're gonna eat him and he was he was kind of being mean <laughs> this this guy's the worst because he really didn't have feathers to begin with <laughs> so there's uh, like i don't want to eat him there's just quills in there and he's like the size of a cornish I don't know about I him. Eat him either. I don't think he's gonna be good at all because he was just nasty looking. He wasn't appealing looking. He wasn't. Though, he looked you know? kind of something was wrong with I, him. I had no problem grabbing him and. and uh, what did the him. other chickens do? Did they freak out? Well, they saw Mr. Penny and they did freak out. They freaked out. I saw. I wonder. He was he was hopping around like a frog. It was wild. I wonder what they're gonna do, like, t like how they're gonna treat you. Are they gonna respect you, or they're gonna be terrified of you? I don't. I don't really think it. It made me realize that a chicken's brain is is like reptilian. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Like that they are. I don't think they're connected with us at all. It's not like a dog. Like it is just. You know, there's not much functioning going on up there. No, well, I guess that's so, true, right? I mean, I'm not gonna lie, it smells like the chickens, like whenever I'm, you know, doing- You're in the raw chicken meat section? Yeah, yeah, it yeah. does. The, the, the raw chicken meat does not smell good, I will say. Yeah, it's not. Mm. Like, raw steak, you know, it's kinda got like a- Irony. You're like, mmm, yeah, it smells good. Raw chicken, mm, not so much. not good. So, anyway, I'm using your flower bed, by the way. I see that. Garden bed to, uh, 
It's a nice little station for you. Yeah, it's kind of nice. I think you need to add a shelf, like right there. I think so too. You put mm -hmm. tools in it, mm -hmm. hang, hang things. Yeah, I agree. So anyway, uh, let's fire up this grill. Okay. Let's get this party started. So this is this is kind of interesting, babe. You've probably never seen this before, but like when you heat up the chicken, this this feet off the skin comes off. You know how people eat chicken feet? Like Ew. you peel the peel that off like scales, and then it's clean underneath, like all the way down to the toenails. Oh, by the way, look at this spur. That is a big spur. Oh my gosh. They could get you. That's it's... like a big old canine tooth. So, <laughs> it's a good time for him to go. Uh, OSG was kind enough to get us some herbs from the garden. Sage, oregano, rosemary. And she melted us up some butter. So I'm going to go ahead, uh, by the way, probes, putting the probes in, uh, extremely difficult. If that is any, any indicator of how tough these birds are going to be, uh, we got, we're going to be chewing. We've got the pellet grill set on 365. I'm just going to lather these up with some butter. They're already... Uh, they've already got olive oil on them with uh, some herbs, some spices. But I'm going to go ahead and just give them a little bit more. The great thing about a pellet smoker is I have cooked some questionable pieces of meat on here and they've turned out excellent. It makes them tender. Um, I would say if you're going to eat a lot of wild game, this is probably one of the best things you can invest in. Pellet smokers are just so easy, easy to cook wild game. Well, this is a backyard chicken, and it should be decent, but uh, I'm concerned about the toughness. Mr. Penny was a fighter. Fighter pumped up on testosterone. Uh, he's probably going to be really chewy. All right. You just poke me in the butt with a broom? I did. I feel like we're one of those, uh, what's that picture? With, oh, like, yeah. With the well, farmer? Yeah, yeah good. I need uh, a poker. Uh, <laughs> you need a fish fork. Yeah, exactly. A fish fork. But. Yeah, we do. We actually have like a small homestead, I guess you could call it, with, uh, with the veggies coming. And the raisins and the chickens. got some chickens. Yeah. Yeah, we do. Do you think it's going to actually taste good? I think the taste will be all right. I, I think the toughness, that's going to be the key. I think if we had uh, a lot of time, I think I would brine it for two days. Yes. Because, by the way, did it look so tough? Yes, I was actually going to do that for this video. Stephanie left for a girls' trip uh, for the weekend. You know. So it's my fault. <laughs> no, 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 it's not your fault. But I thought I could. I I thought I could come in here and be like, you know what? I'm going to get this video where I cook the chickens while watching two kids. It's going to be no problem. Yeah. Joke's on. I, I did. I didn't get anything done except for that garden box. You actually got a lot done while I was gone and managed to keep the house clean. I'm Thank honestly you. impressed. Thank you. So They were both mixed breed chickens, but Colonel Sanders does have some um, leghorn in him. Mm. So that's like the white chickens that lay a lot of eggs. So I'm thinking offspring wise, mm. probably better with him. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Look, look, he's laying down right now on the on the roosting bar. I have never seen him do that. He's never had the opportunity to do it. He's, he's happy. He's used to getting smacked around by Mr. Penny always being on guard. He's, he's taking a rest right now. I feel good about it now. I was I was a little questionable at first. I felt kind of bad, but... Well, and Emmy's good with it, too. Like, she literally saw you out here cutting Mr. Penny Yeah, up. I did not mean for that to happen. Well, I mean, no, it's fine. Shoot. By the way, when should I add this in here? I would cook it with it. Cook it with it? Yeah, right. just lay it on top. Or, yeah. And I would use that butter very generously. Yeah, slap it on mm -hmm. there. Okay, well, it's not supposed to catch fire. I don't know what to do here. It's honestly never, never happened before. Oh, man. This side over here got rocked pretty hard. With fire, I think this one, we're all right. Got ourselves a steamy, steamy chicken over there, and it's quite hard. I think 
uh, I think it could take a broadhead right now. Cooked it too fast, but it was tough to begin with. I really knew before I plucked the feathers it was going to be tough. You know, you're sitting there looking at Mr. Penny, he's like all just muscled up. Cooked a lot of chickens in my life uh, on the grill and in the oven and stuff. And, you, you know, you're handling the chicken and... Uh, it just this just felt completely different. This could have something to do with not resting it either. Like not putting it on ice, doing a brine, things like that. Uh, I've I've run into this issue before. Yeah, this is probably it. I've run into this issue before with uh other wild game, like deer where you cook it up right away and you think, "Man, it's going to be the best cuz it's so fresh." And you don't let the meat rigamortify, if that's a, a word. You don't let the enzymes or whatever it is inside of the meat start to break down and, and get it a little soft. That's when things get chewy. Uh, so I've, I've seen that in deer, where it's just like absolute jerky. Fresh. Um, I, think so, I think that's what we're dealing with here. So, this is my bad. I don't think I did Mr. Penny justice on it, but we're gonna we're gonna get him a taste and see how he is. It's 165. I mean, it feels yeah. like I did Mr. Penny temperature-wise pretty good. good. One side got absolutely crisp. I mean, got burned. That's okay. But this side over here might be all right. I think we should so, just yeah go for the dark meat. <laughs> go for the dark meat. Oh, is that that looks really dark. Mm. Looks like. Uh, well, there's there's something there's something with that. Hold on. Oh, it looks like scary dark. The darker the meat means like the more like muscle it had. Well, woo! He had a lot of muscle. He had a lot of muscle. All right, there's a leg. That is a tough looking leg. Let's let's get a because, shot of this. Because because when they're farm raised, I don't think they have a whole lot of stress. Like it's a very easy life for them. Yeah, so they have more like. We well, got fat. prison birds or what? Yeah, they, well they were fighting a lot. So, this is that dark meat on the rear end, like we're talking about. Like, that leg is, it looks like squirrel leg. That's how dark it is. It looks cooked, though. Yeah. All right, let's, ch let's check out the breasts. Okay. Let's see what the breast section, not, they don't have much breasts. Oh, Ooh, juice, juice is popping. Juice is squirting. Okay, this is the breast. <laughs> Of Mr. Penny. Now it looks cooked all right. A little piece for you and I. Here we go, Mr. Penny. It was a good run. Not it. Not it? Try that's it. not it? Oh no, if you say that's not it, is there something just wrong tasting about it? Try it. No, I don't want to. Can I cut that in half? Oh gosh, it looks super. Yeah. Super. No, I don't know about that. I can't do that. I can't even cut that. You can't even chew it. Uh uh, I can't. No, I'm not doing that. Uh uh. Mm -mm. <laughs> Let's try like the breast was, it looked good, but wow. Chewy, dark leg. That ain't it? Absolutely not. It hey. feels like it's not even cooked. What? Like it's cooked, but it feels like it's not even cooked. I, I, if you were served that at a restaurant, you would you would slap the person. Oh my gosh! I wonder what the little one is like. If if Mr. Penny's that bad. Okay. Going for the chicken nuggets over chicken here. Chicken nuggets for lunch. Oh, I caught a lizard for real all by myself. You did? Mm -hmm. Where is it? It's outside in my treehouse. Oh, that's a good spot for it. What color was it? It was green. Green? You caught a lizard? It's a green and all. Yeah. Whoa. I was, be... I was holding his tail. But you gotta be okay. quick. Yeah, I was. I'm quick at catching fast things. Did his tail stay on or did it come off? Well, did you know that those lizards, if you grab their tail, they have a defense mechanism where their tail will come apart. It'll, it'll lose their tail and they'll grow a new one. Did you know that? Like, Oh, I, I already know that on PBS Kids. Hey, the good thing is, you have lizards on your pants. I do. Those are slizzards from GuggenSquad.com, where you can use code LFG to save 10% at checkout. 
I'm gonna be honest with you. I've eaten I've eaten a lot of stuff from the woods. There's something wrong about that. That does not taste right. Like as soon as the teeth hit it, it's like you get the smell. So you get the sensation that you're eating something wrong. It just, yeah, it tastes like it's not cooked, even though I probed it many times, made sure we're over 165. This is, this is not it. This is not it, guys. I, I feel bad. I feel terrible, really, that, I mean, oh, it looks good tried. on the outside. I tried to make this work. Hey. It's okay. okay. Not gonna lie, guys. I've eaten raw liver in Africa before. That's been laying out in the sun. I've eaten some wild stuff in, uh, you know, in the land of doing Guggen videos. Uh, and that was the most unedible thing that I've ever tried. Like, immediate tongue, body was like, nope, can't even chew it, tastes terrible, uh, it was not good. So, uh, it was kind of shocking, quite honestly. But, the roost seems happier, more copacetic, uh, more, more unity around the one rooster and the six hens, so that is the good news about it. But I am, I've never done this before, but I, I'm just gonna throw those chickens into the woods and you know, let the coyotes uh, take part in it or use some for catfishing. You know, I, I'm planning on doing a little catfishing next, but so we got some eggs that are being sat on by a broody hen right now. Hopefully she hatches them in about 20 days and we will have some more chickens here so I can get some more eggs and if we do have some roosters if I have to uh, take another one out I will be letting that thing sit on ice and brining it at least 24 hours before that thing touches a grill it's free you got it all right be gentle be gentle Nice fat little lizard. How did you catch that thing? I don't know. You gotta be really fast. I am. I am. You're just really fast, aren't you? Hey, you wanna see me climb up on that tree again to put it back? All right. Sometimes well. I let my favorite things go and I wanna catch it, then I guess put them back. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. It's a good thing to do. I, I sometimes I catch uh, some fish that I really like and then I put them back. You wanna go fishing with me? Catfish? Mm-hmm. Okay. And is today a perfect day? Uh, it's a little stormy today. Yeah. Maybe later. Hey, I also got a ladybug in here. It's my little woods girl right there. Love that little girl. All right, guys, I'm going to sign it off. You know what to do. I will see you on another outdoor adventure.